This is Anona's Worship, Grow, Serve, Live podcast for November 19th, 2023, Thanksgiving Sunday with Casey McKinney. This is one of our sermon series episodes produced by Anona United Methodist Church. For more information and video versions, visit anona.com forward slash sermon series. If you're new to Anona and wish to learn more about our community, go to anona.com forward slash welcome. And now for another great message. Happy Thanksgiving Sunday. Thank you. Five people. I love it. Love it. Okay. We're going to do a little quick poll and see where we're at because I know Thanksgiving and the holidays is kind of a toss up on how we're feeling. So first of all, who here is stressed out about this week? Hands raised. One, uh, maybe a couple. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. It's a lot to do. It's a lot of prep. I know I get it. Who here is excited about this week? Okay, good. Love it. Okay, awesome, awesome. Raise your hand if you are hosting. Everyone is going to your house. See, that's why you're stressed, Susan, because everyone's going to your house. That is a stressful thing to do. But can I tell you something? Do you know why you win, you hosts? Because you are always in the same vicinity as your pajamas. You never leave your jammies. As soon as everyone leaves, you're three minutes away from pajamas. Guys, it's right there. Yes, amen. Raise your hand if you are going to someone's house. You are a guest. Lovely. Do you know why you win? Because you can leave (laughs) anytime. Oh, you know, look at the kids are fussing. We got to go. Your kids are in college. Oh, we got to go. Yeah. And then you get to choose when it's time for jammies. That's right. We're all going to get to our pajamas. Okay, amazing. Love it. This one kind of divides us a little bit. I know it got a little heated in uh, early service. Who here already has their Christmas decorations up? Ah, well done. Well done. Who here is offended by them? There we go. I knew it was going to happen. What? Okay, the Christmas decor people are hardcore, like Christmas as soon as Halloween's over kind of thing. But then the not Christmas until after Thanksgiving people are, I think, even more hardcore, like the defenders of Thanksgiving to say, no, we must give Thanksgiving its own moment. It's the most fierce defense. So I'm going to bring us back together because we just got a little bit divided. We are all excited about the food. Are we not? Yes, yes, of course we are, hopefully. I hope that's kind of the main event, right, of this whole thing. Was anyone here growing up, were you in a clean your plate family? So when it came to dinner, you had to eat every single bite of food on your plate. You could knock it up from the table. It didn't matter if you liked it. Didn't matter if you didn't like it. Whatever. This was dinner. You clean your plate. I was not... That sounds difficult, all of you, by the way. We were not in my family because my parents had this wild idea about taste buds. And they were like, hmm, we have taste buds as grown-ups. You children are human beings also with taste buds. And just the same way that grown-ups don't always care for certain things, you know what? Your taste buds aren't always going to care for certain things. And so we were not in a cleaner plate family. We were in a you-have-to-try-it-all family. So we had to do one full bite, chew and swallow of everything. No sneaky, no funny business. You could not just look at it and say that you weren't going to try it. You had to try absolutely everything. But then if you authentically just did not care for it, we were not allowed to say we didn't like something because that was rude. We had to say, I don't care for that. And then you did not have to finish it. I loved it. I thought it was always good. I never, I felt like I never had to pretend like I liked something that I didn't actually like. I tried everything, you know, it was fair enough. So I always, I always appreciated that about my parents. I felt like it gave us some kind of mutual respect as well, just human to human. Like I didn't have to suffer through eating. That's, it's a a joy in life. Why would we do that? I've just always appreciated that about my parents. They didn't force us to pretend that something that tasted bad didn't taste bad. They didn't force us to shove it down and force it down at the dinner table and just pretend that everything tasted good, when in reality, it just didn't. Some things just didn't taste good, and they didn't make us pretend otherwise. And now, friends, as much as I love Thanksgiving, 
And as much as I love the practice of gratitude, I have a complicated relationship with the way we use gratitude in our culture. Because I think, at least in my experience, a lot of times we can use gratitude as kind of the clean your plate mentality, where you sit down in front of whatever you've got in life and you've just got to force it all down. You've got to pretend like it's all good, even when something just isn't. And we have to pretend like it's all good and we're thankful for it all because it's all on our plate. It doesn't leave a lot of room for honesty. In my opinion, I think we can tell people to be thankful as almost an attempt at remedying suffering. Like, oh, you're going through something so hard, so why don't you just be grateful? And if you're grateful enough, then things will get better. And if things aren't getting better, then maybe you just need to be more thankful. And to me, again, it just doesn't leave a lot of room for health or honesty when it comes to this practice, because some things in life just aren't good. And it's okay to say that. Some things in life don't taste good the way some things on our plates don't taste good. So I don't love the way we often approach gratitude. And yet, we know it's an important practice. We know we've seen the reports about how it improves our mental health. And we know that we have good things in our life to be grateful for. And it's all through scripture. We know this is an important practice. So my question for us today is how do we have a more balanced and authentic, honest look at gratitude that doesn't require us to pretend, that doesn't require us to force things down or act like the bad things aren't bad, but that also invites us to lean into this important practice with just a little bit more honesty. I think our scripture for today can point us in that direction, so we're going to jump in to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, We're going to read verses 12 through 16. These are the closing remarks that Paul is giving in his letter. And what we'll find is that in these kind of formats, a lot of times the authors would give little one-liners as just kind of like wisdom snippets before they're going to sign off and wrap up their letter. And that's what we're jumping into right now. We're seeing Paul give this church a bunch of one-liners, little tips for them as they go. And our verse for today is nestled in there. So we're picking up at verse 12, and this is what he says. Paul says, now we ask you, brothers and sisters, to acknowledge those who work hard among you, who care for you in the Lord and who admonish you. Hold them in the highest regard and love because of their work. Live in peace with each other. And we urge you, brothers and sisters, warn those who are idle and disruptive. Encourage the disheartened. Help the weak. Be patient with everyone. Make sure that nobody pays back wrong for wrong, but always strive to do what is good for each other and for everyone else. And then here's our little takeaway for today. Our one-liner says this, rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. In the past, when I have heard this scripture discussed or interpreted or unpacked, I've often heard of it in almost a clean your plate mentality kind of way, where people approach this and say, see, be thankful in all circumstances. That means be thankful for every single thing on your plate. Be thankful all the time. Always be thankful. Everything is from God. Uh, look at, this is, this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus, whatever circumstance you're in. So go and be thankful for that. But in my opinion, friends, that's not what Paul is saying here. Because Paul doesn't say to give thanks for all circumstances. What does he say? In. He says, give thanks in all circumstances. And to me, that leaves a lot more room for us today. Give thanks in all circumstances. It doesn't mean that we are thankful for every single thing on our plate or for every single circumstance we find ourselves in. We don't have to feel that pressure to be thankful for the bad and hard things that has happened to us. We don't have to be thankful for that. I think what Paul invites us into here, 
gratitude in all circumstances is this place of honesty where we get to say, hey, I might not be grateful for this, but within the reality that I find myself, within my real life, where I am, what can I be grateful for? Within the circumstance, where is the good? Where is the light? It's finding things within our reality that are still good, even when other things aren't. See, if we have to be thankful for all circumstances, that means that, for example, if we were to leave here today and, God forbid, get in a car accident on the way home, if someone tells us to be thankful for all circumstances, that says, hey, you have to be thankful for that car accident. And I don't think that's very healthy. I don't think that's very honest. Maybe some people are super sweet here in the room and just lovely, and you could find a way to be thankful for that. If you are spicy like I am, I will offer a different perspective and say, if I got in a car accident after this, I would say, my insurance is going to go up. My car is a mess. I broke my arm. I am ungrateful for this. I would like to send this back. This is not what I ordered. That's just me being honest. Being thankful for all circumstances would set us up for failure, in my opinion. Being thankful in all circumstances offers another perspective. It says within this car accident that I am not grateful for, I don't like that this has happened, but within this current reality, where are the good things? Where is there still something to be thankful for? I got in a car accident, I'm not grateful for it, but I'm super thankful I had my seatbelt on. Okay, I got in a car accident. I'm not thankful for that, but I'm super thankful for the EMS workers. Does that make sense? We don't have to be thankful for those big bad things that happen to us, but being thankful in the circumstance helps us to see that the bad thing isn't the only thing that's there. That even within the bad, sometimes, and I get it, sometimes we're just in the thick of it. I've been there and you're just like, there is no good here whatsoever at all. Fine, fair enough. Like, Trauma is real. Your grief is real. I'm not going to tell you otherwise. But when we can see it, perhaps there are still things within those circumstances that are good, that we could find to be thankful for. Friends, the truth is we all know that the holidays are tough. We know that they're a mixed bag. We know, like we did this morning, that some of us are excited and some of us are stressed and some of us are looking forward to Thursday and some of us are grieving it. And it's a mixed bag of how we're going to feel in the holidays. And to me, if we set ourselves up for this expectation that whatever happens, we just have to be thankful, I think that's just going to hurt us in the long run. You know, some of us are going to spend all week slaving away and making the house perfect and cooking the perfect Thanksgiving dinner, and then something's going to burn in the oven, or Uncle Jim's going to come and start talking about politics, or something bad is going to happen, or someone's going to be late, or the table runner's going to get stained, or the dog's going to pee on the carpet. You know, it's going to happen with Ellie. I'm just preparing for it. It can happen. We don't have to be thankful for all of those things, but within those circumstances, When Uncle Jim talks about politics, when the dog pees on the carpet, what can we be thankful for? Some of us are going to gather around tables this Thursday, and we're going to be so grateful for the people that are surrounding our tables. And we are going to be so sad to see the chairs that are empty. And both of those things are true. It is so true that we are grateful, and it is so true that we are grieving. And those things don't have to cancel each other out. We can be thankful that Uncle Jim's going to (laughs) leave after he makes his comments on politics. We can be thankful that the puppy is cute even when she pees on the carpet. We can be thankful that maybe something didn't burn in the oven even though the turkey did. And turkeys are dry anyway. Why do we even eat them on Thanksgiving? It's the lower class meat. (sighs) I said it so you don't have to. Authentic gratitude says that two things can be true. Authentic gratitude does not negate your suffering. You are worth far more than that. Your grief matters so much more than that. I will never stand up here and tell you that you have to pretend or that you have to act like the things that have hurt you don't hurt you. They do. Life is hard. What gratitude does is it reminds us that it's not only hard. 
there is still good and there is still beauty in the circumstances where we find ourselves. Personally, friends, I really like taking advice from people who have gone through terrible things in their lives. So line up and you can just give me whatever you want. I just feel like their advice is super trustworthy. And so one person for me in that category is a professor at Duke University and an author named Kate Bowler. And I'll give you a little bit of her background. This is just from her website, just so you know where she's coming from. Uh, she's, it says that she wrote the first and only history of the American prosperity gospel, which is the belief that God wants to give you health, wealth, and happiness. We can talk about that later. Before being unexpectedly diagnosed with stage four cancer at age 35 when she had a husband and a new baby at home. While she was in treatment and not expected to survive, she wrote two New York Times best-selling memoirs, and after years of being told she was incurable, she was declared cancer-free. But she was forever changed by what she discovered. Life is so beautiful, and life is so hard for everyone. So she's someone I'm going to definitely take her advice. She has wrestled. She has gone through it. She has gone through the fire. She has done the work. So I'm going to look to her, someone like her, and say, what do you think about gratitude? What do you think about this practice? Because I know it's not going to be just sunshine and rainbows and, oh, everything good comes from God. Okay, cool. Yeah, it sure it does. But I want someone like that to tell me what she honestly thinks. And here's what a few of her little tidbits that I watched some interviews from her this week. And here's a few little tidbits from her about gratitude. She says, gratitude is an accounting of lovely. Isn't that nice? It is an accounting of lovely. It is the beauty of small details, the ability to allow smaller and smaller things to count in the plus column of our lives while recognizing that that never diminishes the negative. It's this beautiful dance of adding up the things here and the plus and knowing that this is still here, the negative is still there, but so is this. Gratitude asks the questions, what are the ordinary things in your life that count? Is it that there was sunshine through your window this morning? Is it that your coffee tasted good? Is it that you went on a walk? Is it that you bought a new candle? It might be so small, but what are those ordinary things that still count? What can we say that is beautiful and true? Finally, she says, gratitude is the virtue of attention. Isn't that nice? That awareness, paying attention, looking for lovely, looking for those things that are still good and still true in the midst of things that are also hard and true. It reminds me of what Paul said in another letter to the church in Philippi. He said, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy. If. Don't you love that? Don't you love that humanity, that honesty? If there's anything. There might not be. You might be in a day where you're just like, everything about today is terrible. But if there's anything, think about those things. If there's anything good and lovely, let it have your attention. Friends, if I had to sum it all up, I would say that for me, Gratitude is most authentically present when we allow those two things to be true. When we allow the plus column and the negative column to exist at the same time. When we allow ourselves to see that the good, beautiful, lovely, excellent, and praiseworthy things still happen to us, even in these lives and these circumstances that we may not have chosen. As Albus Dumbledore once said, (laughs) happiness can be found in the darkest of times if only one remembers to turn on the light. That's what gratitude does for us. So friends, in the midst of the awful and the terrible and the good and the bad and the lovely and the hard, I invite us this Thanksgiving to take an honest approach to gratitude. 
accounting for the lovely and adding those ordinary things into our plus column, even when the negative is still there. And I will go first. My friends, I am thankful for friends and family and friends who have become family and family who are my friends. I am thankful that Ellie, my eight-month-old golden retriever puppy, has started doing this adorable little growl whenever she gets excited and she sounds like a little baby Chewbacca and it's the greatest thing ever. I am thankful for blankets and pumpkin scented candles and good books and Netflix, which are all still there even when life is hard. I am thankful for you, a church full of honest people that show up for each other in the good and the bad, the light and the dark, the painful and the lovely. And I am so thankful for our children, our children who always remind me of what is truly important in life, who inspire me to look at the world with a little bit more joy and wonder just like they do. If you found this message meaningful, share it with others. To find more great episodes and stay up to date, subscribe to Another United Methodist Church's podcast on Apple Music, Spotify, or anywhere you find your favorite podcast shows. In addition, subscribe to our channel on YouTube and find the community on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Anona Church. You can join us on our campus in Largo, Florida, and discover new ways to reach out to the Pinellas County community. Be a part of the Anona Church family as we worship, grow, serve, and live.